What is up YouTube? This is going to be a fun video today because we're going to nut check my haversack. It'll be fun. My rooster is going to be as annoying as he possibly can. He's been getting right up near me and doing that non-stop and making it impossible to film this video, but he's raiding the compost pile now, so hopefully we can get this done. But dudes, here's the deal with this haversack. You guys saw me pull it out of my old truck, and I did not go through it and make sure it has everything in it to make me look like a freaking pimp, okay? I didn't do that. It's got what it's got in it, and it's time to check the bag and make sure that it has what I need it to have for me. And let's talk about that. What is the purpose of whatever bag it is you're going to flush out, right? Is it a haversack that's a multi-purpose bag? Because that's what this is for me. Right now, it is meant to basically uh, complement my get-home bag, which is a bag that goes with us anywhere. Anytime we leave the ranch, the get-home bag goes. It's got water, food, emergency blankets, like first aid kit fire starting equipment all kinds of stuff in it and of course there should be some redundancies in this bag uh, but this bag right now is set up to complement that now if my wife and i were going to go out into you know the national forest and do some dispersed camping and hike around and stuff like that a lot of the contents of this bag would probably end up in the back of our little suv or our truck so i had a lighter weight bag now i'm in a situation where i can pick up a whole bunch of extra kindling or tinder or uh, some morels if I see them. Maybe I'm doing some fishing, you know, and I want to use this as a creole instead. So multi-purpose, right guys? Uh, so we're going to check this bag. We're going to see what we got in it. You guys can uh, make jokes in the comments below and laugh at me if I have any dumb shit that's embarrassing. That's fine with me. Make sure you like the video and subscribe to the channel because I am going to go over my get home bag in the future you guys are probably going to want to see that if you're into this whole bag kit thing all right let's get right after it first let's talk about this bag i purchased this bag on amazon four and a half five years ago ish okay so it's seen some pretty regular use since then uh, it's not doing too bad although um i saw a couple of spots where the stitching is it, it might need some repair in the near future, okay? And the back of it, it's got a couple of holes and some abrasions. Uh, the strap is okay, I'll tell you guys that. It doesn't have a lot of cushion on it, and I'll actually try and find the same bag and put it in the description below. One of the pluses was this bag was very affordable when I bought it. I don't know what it's going for now, but it cost me like 18 bucks. So it was kind of just easy to pull the trigger on it. And uh, you know, it's still doing the job all these years later. I did attach my Ranger beads, so paste beads. And these are actually the Ranger beads I carried at Ranger School. So not only is it useful to have it, but uh, you know, it's memories, sweet memories. You know what I'm saying? Let's open the front flap, which actually latches down here on this ring. So what we have with this bag is we have a front flap here that has a separate pouch. And these cartridge loops are great for 30 caliber, especially a rimmed cartridge. So I've used these for 30-30. They fit and they're just great. Now the weight does kind of make the pouch do this kind of thing because it's not reinforced or anything. Just be aware if you want to get one of these. Uh, but it's been a safe way to carry them for me. I don't think I've ever lost a single cartridge carrying them with this bag like that. Let's get into this front pouch, guys. All right, so first off, we have some dental floss. So what this is, is it's, uh, it's makeshift cordage. No, I'm not super anal about flossing my teeth, all right? That's not me, but this is makeshift cordage, and these are super cheap. If you get them on sale, you can get these for like 50 cents, and they don't weigh anything. So kind of hard not to have one in your bag. Let's pull everything out. We've got some eye drops. 
and uh, the label long disappeared on these obviously but every once in a while my right eye bugs me it's my shooting eye you know what i'm saying so i gotta keep that shit in like top running freaking condition so i keep those in there i have three packs of folgers instant coffee now, if you guys have watched my other videos you know that this is actually a multi-purpose piece of kit okay if you're falling asleep you can take these open one and rub the grounds in your eyeball it will wake you up immediately if you need to stay awake you can also take it and dump it in between your your lip and your gums or under your tongue yeah it's strong okay but it's gonna you're still gonna get that caffeine it's gonna help wake you up you know you could even shotgun one of these up the butthole if you really wanted to you know and and i'm sure your body would absorb it super fast that way as well and help wake you up you could also make coffee kind of a no-brainer that one but i have four packs of those i have a falk knife and dc4 sharpening stone with a strop on the back pretty cool about these of course i'm usually wearing a leather upper on my boots and just could strop on there or my belt but uh i actually really like these falk knife and sharpening stones this one has a diamond grid on one side and a ceramic that's more mild on the other and this will get the job done the field guys great it's actually really really good i had a dc6 before this one and it went everywhere with me in this haversack in this front pouch and i think that like sometimes this thing was getting kicked around by kids and i'd find it like this and i think that that dc6 kind of escaped out the bag and ended up in a parking lot somewhere lose for me win for somebody else uh, but i am really liking the size of the dc4 great great sharpening stone they're pretty affordable as well and now we've got some fire starting kit you know combustion one of the five c's of survival right guys i have two bic lighters uh i don't know if you can tell on this one it says Bic there on the button, and I can tell it's full by the weight. And this one is just about full. I think it's seen a little bit of use. And this is one of the minis. Um, this stainless case was given to me by my stepfather who has passed. And so, you know, it just is a, a little bit of memorabilia with me and my kit. But Bic lighters, guys, these are awesome. You can get 300 fires out of one of these you don't have your head up your ass and you make sure your tinder and your kindling are actually dry okay if it's wet you're gonna be sitting there like just burning through that butane trying to get it lit that's not how you do it guys you got to find out where the good dry kindling and tinder is so you can just get the job done in like three seconds bam you're good i have a full-size bic like this one on my entertainment center in the house and it's gone through two winters of me starting fires in my wood stove with it and it still has butane in it okay so they'll last for a long ass time they also don't waste shit and they're affordable so make sure you have at least one of those with you i have another one in this pocket here believe it or not i've got a big fat fire steel in this bag it's nice and thick and long that's what she said probably half an inch thick and probably five inches long i want to say and you guys can tell this one's brand new but it's been struck why it's because you don't ever get a brand new fire steel and throw it in a bag and expect it to do its job without making sure it can do its job okay guys and this thing will last for thousands of fires and shit hit the fan it will probably outlive me all right, and obviously we got a little bit of a lanyard here because you know what? You don't want to Joe Robinette it up. You don't want to be on a loan and on like day two and shit, lose your fire steel and quit, okay? So don't lose this shit. And if you lose it, don't quit. Anyways, uh, that's it for that front pouch. Let's get into the second pouch. Now, this haversack on the interior, so it's got the, the, the front pouch, but in the interior it's divided into three sections and i actually really like that about this haversack i don't like the ones 
that are just one pouch so much. I want to have like at least one divider. Really one divider, I'd be happy with that. I can make it work. Because the approach that I take is I put soft stuff on the back of it, the side that's facing your body, so it's a little more comfortable to carry. Um, it is. It's just more comfortable and it's smarter that way than carrying all the hard shit in the back. So all my hard stuff ends up in front. And what we have is we have a hard use knife here. So this is the K-Bar Heavy Duty Warthog. It's a quarter inch thick blade stock, this knife. My dad raised me to believe that knives are for cutting only. That is all you do with them. You don't pry, you don't beat on them, you only cut with them. And I believed that for a long time and I followed that school of thought. And then one day I didn't. And I started using hard use knives and found that they do actually have a place in the world despite the people that are telling you they don't. And then I've moved back towards knives that tend to cut more than they are durable. But going to town and this being a bag that was outfitted to supplement my get home bag, having a good hard use knife and it makes sense. Now my patrons know that I have knives that are much better than this one. But guess what? This one's cheap. And if someone breaks into my old ass truck and steals my haversack, I'm not gonna cry myself to bed at night by losing this knife. I'd hate to have my Prather War buoy in there or something like that and have it stolen. That, I might, I might actually cry about that. We'll leave it out so we can, you know, film shit and make it look cool with some B-roll later. Next, we have a small cross-cutting saw. Dudes, these are awesome. I know guys love to get out and chop with knives like this. But you know what? It's not efficient when it comes to your calories. This is efficient. If you have to cross cut or you have to limb a tree, this is very, very efficient. So having one of these, especially when they're this light, and to be honest, guys, I actually inherited this one uh, from my stepfather that left me this lighter. Uh, he gave that act to me, actually. Um, the brand says Corona. I've been using it for years. I've never replaced the blade, and it's still sharp as shit. So just another uh, additional tool. And guys, remember the five C's of survival, right? Cutting is number one. And cutting is the most important one, in my personal opinion, having good cutting tools with you. We got another knife. Okay, here we go. So... Uh, I actually remember throwing this in the bag. This is very new to me. It's a Mora Classic in carbon steel. And I hate to say it, but this is the first Mora I ever got that was not razor sharp brand new. It wasn't. You guys can probably tell I had to hit it up on a stone. And that stone is worked over and not flat anymore, so it didn't quite hit the entire uh, um, bevel. When it came to sharpening the Scandi. But Scandies are great for woodwork, guys. And it's always good to have a spare fixed blade knife on you. Now I have two spares, right? Because I'm always packing a fixed blade knife. Always. Even a lot of times if I'm going to a wedding or some shit. But occasionally, you can catch me with a folder in my pocket. So I've got that one. And then I have... My Victorinox multi-tool. You guys can probably tell this thing has been used and abused. It's literally let like live the life of a $2 hooker, man. Okay, it's had a hard life. And I don't even think they make these anymore, to be honest with you. Um, but if you can get one of these, even if you had to pay 200 bucks, I'm gonna tell you that it's worth it. You have a serrated blade on here, a plain edge, a number of different tools, everything from can openers, not that you actually need those, um, to flat heads, Phillips heads, a leather punch that you can use like an awl. You got the pliers, you know, you've got both metric and standard measurements on it. And guys, I actually lost this tool, this exact tool, for three days. I dropped it in the snow when I was working years ago, like, Shit, probably freaking 
like 14 years ago. It took me three days to find it. I kept going back after work and looking for it. And I finally found it and not a spot of rust on it. And this thing did our sailboat adventures with us. Still not a spot of rust on it. Just a great piece of kit. Let's get into the middle pouch. All right. So we got a life straw. Now this one's a brand new one. I do remember that, although I bought it a while ago. Dudes, these don't weigh anything and they're super cheap. And I'm gonna tell you straight up, guys, uh, it's something that you should have with you all the time. Even though, I'm gonna tell you that most of the survivalists out there that you see boiling water didn't need to boil it. People are scared shitless of stuff like Giardia. It just cracks me up, man. I have drunk so much dirty ass water from different places. Like just cause it's murky looking or cloudy doesn't mean you can't drink it. It means there's some dirt particulate in it. And if anything, the human diet could, could use a little extra dirt these days. Uh, pro tip with these, cause a lot of people don't read the instructions. If you use it and you're drinking dirty water out of it, make sure you blow out of the straw when you're done. Blow it good and hard, all right? That's what she said. Because if you don't do it, that water stays in there and it I think it swells up a part of the filter and then you can't drink anything through this anymore. That happened with me in my first life straw, so it was a throwaway. Next, we have an empty, now there's hair and dirt and shit all over this stuff, by the way. So apparently my second pouch is full of hair. <laughs> I wonder what poor creature ended up in there last. This is just an empty vitamin bottle. I think it was vitamin D that I ran out of now that I think about it. I cut the label off and threw it in here because you know what? You never know when it's gonna be good to have a little durable container with you and it doesn't really weigh anything. It just takes up some space. But let's say I found like some, uh, some obsidian, right? And I wanted to bring it with me. Let's say I'd lost my, uh, my fire steel and used up my big lighters and I need something to strike a spark off this carbon steel knife. And so I have some flint, let's say I find it, I keep it in this bat in this uh, container so it's not cutting up my bag and getting hard to find in there, you know? It just, it's useful to have these little kinds of things, I find. You don't have to agree. I have another knife, so maybe I have more knives than I need in this bag. This is a little Rapala. So real quick about these little fillet knives, guys. These are not just great for flaying fish, but they're great for boning out bigger game animals. They've got a stainless steel blade, uh, so you can put them away dirty if you need to, and they're still not that hard to sharpen, even though it's stainless. But these are just great, and they're not that expensive, and they don't waste shit. And I, 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 I'm thinking back to when I threw this Mora in here, and I had uh, thought about taking this out and I didn't do it. I left it in there. So we have another knife in the bag. Snares. Let's see. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven snares for rabbits. I could rig these for squirrels if I needed to as well, but it takes a little bit more work. Um, but guys, if you've done your snaring, and I am a huge proponent of this on this channel when it comes to getting ready for shit at the fan. Learn how to snare rabbits. Because if I had to walk from town all the way back here, we're talking 45 miles. And you know what? I've done movements that were over 40 miles in a day with probably 80 pounds of gear on me. But I was 22. I'm probably not doing that shit anymore. It's going to take me probably a couple of nights to get back here. And I'll tell you what. I know how to use these out here. I can set these up and in the morning, I'm gonna have breakfast. I guarantee you, I'm gonna have breakfast. So, super, super important. Yeah, they're a little heavy, but they're worth the weight. And if you know, if you know and you've used these, it is not hard to improvise and find wire in a vehicle, in a house, you can use to make snares out of. All right, pimps, snares, learn it. And next we have a bag, an empty bag of old trapper jerky. Some of you guys right now are thinking, oh, like you should have thrown that away. But you know what? I actually 
put this in this haversack or kept it in there for a reason, these bags are really tough. And they zip up just like a Ziploc, but they, they're gonna way outlast a Ziploc bag. You know, so if I was stuck out in the woods, I could take this little bag here and I could fill it with tinder if I wanted to. Good dry tinder, even if it was a hair damp, I could keep the baggie open, tuck my shirt in, put this down inside my shirt, let my body heat kind of help dry that tinder out. There's a lot of tricks, guys. Okay, but this is actually in there for a reason. Next, in the center bag, we have a whole bunch of uh, dirt and hair. I think I just sprinkled that in my drink. <laughs> so yeah, probably time to give this thing a good wash. Now, in the back section, the section against my body, we have a shabog. Dudes, these are amazing. If you don't own one of these, okay, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to throw a link in the description to this exact brand. This is a Rothko. It's a cheap shabog. I bought this one maybe two months ago. Um, I do have others like uh, Herbawi shamogs. Those are really, really nice, but they're much more expensive. But I want to say I paid seven bucks for this shamog. It's cotton, not super thick, but it's not super thin. And guys, you can use these for a lot of things. If you don't have one, you need to buy one. Bandanas are awesome, right? I always have one with me. It's part of my EDC kit. But a shamog is more awesome. You can do almost everything you can do uh, with a shamog that you can do with a bandana, but more. You can turn this into a little like fanny pack. You can turn it into a sack. You can get out there and collect like tinder with it. You could pour dirty ass, freaking nasty, sandy ass water through it if you needed to, to kind of filter some of that shit out. A lot of people don't know that most of the heat that escapes your body escapes through your head. It's like a ridiculous amount of the heat. Like 80% escapes your head compared to your hands and your feet, which is nuts. But if you found yourself in a survival situation, you put this damn thing on your head at night out there, keep yourself warm, or even in the daytime, depending on what the temps are looking like. You could also turn this into char cloth if you had to. You could pick up hot shit out of the fire with this if you had to. Lots of stuff you can do with a shamog, guys. I highly suggest you get one if you don't have one right now. I'll put a link down in the description to that exact shamog. And last, but probably not least, and this, so this blue bag is actually a pretty new piece of kit to me. Um, it is a dry bag made by Wise Owl Outfitters, and I purchased a multi-pack. I want to say this was uh, the smallest bag in the pack. It was a three pack, I think. I'll put a link in the description if you guys want to check it out. So it being a dry bag and I have tested it, it is going to keep stuff dry. So what do I have inside? Let's see. I have, I forgot I had this in there. I remembered, so I always keep socks in my haversack and this should be a two pair. Yes, this is a two pair, brand new socks, guys. Not old, worn out freaking socks, man. Put some brand new ones in there. They're probably like a mid height. Yeah, they're not, they're a little shorter than that. They're not very high. That doesn't really matter so much. Just that you have some fresh socks if you had to keep moving and your feet are soaking ass wet and your boots are soaking ass wet. You guys are gonna notice that I don't have any foot powder in my haversack, even though I'm a big proponent of it. And the reason is, is because it is very powdery out here, okay? We're talking fine powder all over the place. And if I needed to powder my feet in a pinch, that's what I'd use. I've actually done it. I've done it quite a bit. Works just fine. You'll see that these are waterproof the second time. That's not really necessary. Just before I got the dry bag, I kept these in a Ziploc and I figured it wasn't going to hurt to have a Ziploc bag with me. So I kept that. Now, I forgot I had this in here. This is some twine, right? Cordage. It's another one of the five C's of survival. And pimps, it's really not hard to make this shit out in nature. You just got to remember that any flexible and strong fiber 
can be used to make cordage if you know the very basic process. Uh, but it's not going to hurt to have some on you. So I have dental floss and this. Okay. Let me demonstrate this bag here for you real quick. So you guys know it works. See? Holding air just like that. Now, what else could I use this bag for? Because I'm in a place where it just doesn't get that much rain. And personally, I was thinking to myself, you know, I put this in my bag in the wintertime. I did do that. It did go in my haversack in the wintertime. Uh, but I was thinking to myself that, uh, you know, if I got caught in the rain, I could stick my shabag in here or anything else that I didn't want getting wet. But I also could fill this with tinder if I wanted to. I could keep dry tinder in this bag and even a small amount of kindling. I think probably eventually, if I did that regularly for quite a while, it would probably eventually uh, make this bag not quite so, you know, so waterproof. Uh, but I probably could do it for a year, you know, before I before this bag wouldn't be doing its job anymore. So just an idea, guys. All right, so let's talk about it. What do I not have in this haversack that I should have in it? Comments down below, guys. I want to hear your thoughts. I'm going to share some of mine, okay? I think that having an emergency blanket would be smart. Cover, obviously, is one of the five C's of survival. And a shemog is cover. Socks are actually cover. A lot of people don't think about it that way. A lot of times, if it's cold outside, my Filson jacket, super lightweight, like compactable jacket, ends up in this haversack as well, which is additional cover. But I think maybe adding an emergency blanket would be smart. Uh, I do keep a bottle of water in the truck, so I do have a container with me, and I do have a, a nice BPA-free water bottle and a stainless cup in my get home bag which goes to town with us as well but a redundancy like an additional bottle would be smart and you know what i really like dudes collapsible canteens i owned a number of them back in the day they all eventually wore out from being folded like how this jerky bag is kind of folded up uh, but they're awesome i actually feel like you know what i missed something I missed something, dudes. In my middle pouch, I had a little bottle here, and I know it's in it right now. I have some different meds and shit. I've got ibuprofen. I have some enzymes because good old efficient in the field stomach hates pizza and shit like that at, at this age. I also have some caffeine. I got 200 milligrams, and then I have half of a 200 so 100 milligrams and i got some viagra as well just in case i'm joking about that but what else could i put in this that's what got me thinking i was going through the rest of it and i'm like what else do i need i don't have any meds and so i looked in the bag and yeah i had some meds benadryl right dudes I'm not allergic to a lot of stuff, but every once in a while I'll get like a weird allergic reaction. So having some Benadryl would definitely make sense. Um, some Tylenol to help deal with a fever, possibly. What else can you guys think of? Hmm. You know, I would probably replace this twine here with bank line. I think I'm gonna go ahead and do that. I think you get way more bang for your buck with bank line. It's stronger for how much weight and space it takes up. So I think that that could definitely be an improvement to the contents. I kind of feel like having another method of sharpening knives. And I do have a file on this Victorinox here. So I guess that could get the job done, but I feel like having a lightweight little diamond rod or something like that would might be a good addition to the kit because cutting tools are so important, guys. If the same thing happened to my DC4 that happened to my DC6, you know, when this fell out and I lost it, I would really be in a worse place. So I think I will add a lightweight 
second option when it comes to sharpening knives. That's about all I can come up with, dudes. Like, I don't need a compass. I know the area out here super well. Uh, there's a lot of stuff I just don't feel that I need. And as a matter of fact, I'm the guy that's been rocking minimalist kit for a long time. And I feel like this bag is actually pretty well equipped. But comments down below, dudes. We're going to wrap the video up. What do you guys think? What do you keep in your bag? If you were going to use a haversack for the same thing that I use mine for, what are you gonna have in it? Or what would you put in it if it's the only bag you're bringing to town with you? Or if you're gonna take a hike way deep in the woods, do one overnight, let's have some fun with it. You're gonna get out there and do one overnight with your haversack and maybe like a, a small tarp and your in a wool blanket and stuff like that. Like what would you bring with you? Okay? That's it, guys. I hope you liked the video. Like it, share it, subscribe to the channel. Check out my Patreon link in the description where I do massive info dumps for my patrons. And I'll see you guys in the next video.